Okay, so in this video, we're still looking at the Microsoft Dynamics Retail Management System Store Operations Point of Sale Software, or RMS for short, but I want to take a look at the manager or the back office side of the software, since there was a separate video with the point of sale side of things. Uh, just a quick recap, over the last 15 years, um, I have to say that RMS has just proven to be an incredibly portable and flexible point-of-sale solution. Whether it's uh, retail or uh, golf, pro shop, museum, government entity like a Department of Transportation or license, driver's license place, uh, to just your typical boutiques and apparel stores, uh, Microsoft, you know, when they took over the QuickSell 2000 and QuickSell Commerce and QuickSell HQ solutions and then kind of retooled and came out with store operations or RMS. They did a great job of making it a, not only flexible, but, but affordable. However, like all good things must come to an end, I guess we have to say. And basically the status of the software is sales will end uh, right about July of 2016. However, because folks will probably still be buying this because it's a great and very affordable point of sale solution, and because there are 60,000 some RMS users, Microsoft will have a, a license swap or a migration path for people. Uh, key thing is you're going to have to be current on your maintenance agreement. That's the annual fee that you pay to make sure that you've got all the updates, patches, and fixes to the software. So if you're current on your maintenance with RMS, then it looks like larger stores will have the option to uh, switch over to Dynamics AX point of sale. And then single location and smaller stores will have the option for the new Dynamics Retail Essentials point of sale solution. And there may be a third solution in the works as well. Microsoft has been kind of hush-hush, but it looks like they might be develop, developing kind of a, a tablet or a mobile point-of-sale solution as well. So, again, I really enjoyed working with the program. And being that there is that migration path, it's still a viable solution, especially since there's some big cost advantages when compared to uh, Retail Pro, Cougar Mountain, and Keystroke. General Store, Comcash, and a lot of the other traditional Windows-based point-of-sale solutions. Um, but there is a lot of competition coming because the newer mobile solutions like Vindo are approaching the capabilities of what RMS can do. And, you know, that you just pay a, a flat fee of 80 bucks or so a month, which is about the same as a utility bill. So um, what I wanted to do again is just take a look at the manager part. And this is where you can see this is something that was developed, you know, more than 10 years ago. Um, because we've got mostly pull-down menus and very few icons. But basically, it, it's pretty straightforward. What I found is typical retail or museum business owner will need about maybe 10 to 15 hours of formal training on the software to become comfortable with it. And so I just want to hit the highlights. There's some standard configuration settings as far as, you know, specifics for your cash drawer and receipt printer and full display and barcode printer. Um, there's some security settings. The program is extremely extensive in the security settings, which kind of con controls what employees and staff can and can't do within the software. Um, we've got our various database items as far as the actual items, setting up taxes, even setting up our cashiers, time clock functions, our different suppliers. Um, cool thing a lot of other programs don't offer are the reason codes. That would be, uh, and you can set the software up to require this when a return is done, but you can put in, you know, why the return is being done. Just, you know, a quick little, uh, time-saving way but to, to track, you know, what's causing the returns. Are they unhappy or is it a different reason? 
And because this program also has a, a headquarters or multi-location module, um, there's some advanced functions. But you can actually still transfer inventory in and out without using HQ. Uh, the idea here is maybe a transfer in is done because something came in that wasn't on a purchase order. And transfer out might be a you know, return to vendor or return to manufacturer because of the um, you know, damaged product or things like that. It's got a great physical inventory module. Uh, what's really cool here is that you can actually, you don't have to do the whole store at once. You can just pick different departments and different categories. So rather than, you know, in December or whenever you do your physical inventory, trying to do everything, you can cycle through maybe each month and just do a department. Or, because we all know the stuff by the front door tends to disappear the quickest, um, unfortunately, usually not being paid for, you know, you could maybe put that, those items in a specific department or category and then run more frequent inventory counts, physical inventory counts to see what the shrinkage is uh, for those items. Um, we also have a journal, which is kind of, um, think of back when cash registers were around and we had to roll up the Z tape. That's kind of what the journal is. Got some wizards that do help you through you know, setting up new items, creating labels, things like that. Um, works great with crystal reports, for customizing reports and getting information out of the database. There's also a lot of add-ons for this, you know, everything from loyalty programs to online shopping carts to working with um, handheld devices. Uh, there's hundreds of different uh, options for RMS here. What I'll do is uh, maybe we'll take a look at a report. This is a demo, so there isn't a lot of information in here, but let's try just a, uh, a daily sales report. If anything, it'll give you the idea of what the reports look like. Reports are a little different from other programs, because this goes back to when we learned in math greater than and equal than, and all those signs. So once you get the hang of it, it's uh, it's pretty good. And what we'll say here, we'll say equal to a year to date, and see if we've got the <clears throat> make them up blank. So for our sales reps, they haven't generated any sales. Make this a bit bigger here. But it gives you an idea of what the reports look like. Um, there is the ability to, when this hourglass appears, to zoom in or to get more details. So if I want in more details on Susan, I could double click over that. Or if I'm viewing an inventory report, I could double click over the part number, UPC number, to get more details. Um, we can resort the data, we can export it, we can email it. Um, a lot of good options. It's just I think the main thing that catches people is the old, uh, <clears throat> the, <clears throat> excuse me, the greater than or equal to terminology when it comes to uh, running a report, and that's where the training comes in, just to give you a good feel for how that all works and make you a report expert. Uh, I've also found what a lot of companies do is come up with some additional customized reports. I know that's one thing that we used to do at Direct POS is um, create a little bundle of the most requested reports. And then what happens there is you've got these custom reports that you can pull. And then you've also got memorized reports. So if there's one that you do every day that you've created, you can memorize it so you don't have to go through all the steps. But um, that's pretty much it. Uh, for the Microsoft RMS manager part of the software. And uh, if I can get the right screen up, if I can help. Um, again, Direct POS did go out of business, but I have over the last 15 years worked with several thousand retail stores, museums, and government entities to help them find the right point of sale solution. Uh, happy to offer free advice or answer your questions. Kind of just a hobby for me at this point. So 
So there's my contact info, and I hope you found this helpful.